Welcome everyone. Today I'm super excited because we'll talk about collections. What are collections in Rust? Collections are data structures that are used to store multiple values. And a big difference with arrays is that they are stored on the heap. This is a very important difference because the data doesn't need to be known at compile. Time, can grow or shrink during the program execution. Sometimes we need it. We don't know at compile time, I don't know, how many rows the user will use or the list of users of an application. What is a vector? A vector allows you to store a variable number of values and they are next to each other. How to create a vector? There are actually two ways to create a vector. One is using this keyword. So we can call it, for example, this vec1. We can define the type. In this case, we can have this vec with angular brackets i32 equal vec double colon new. We can even try to print it print using the println macro cargo run dash q. We see the empty vector here at the top. So we can create a vector with initial values. Let vec2 vec exclamation point for example one two three four five this is a way to initialize a vector with some values a vector can store a variable number of values and this can also be changed after the compile time a vector has some methods it has many methods for example let's start updating a vector and we can type let vec3 vec i32 vec3 dot push one vec3 push two do you think that this will work or not cargo run dash q cannot borrow is mutable cannot borrow is mutable cannot borrow is mutable let mute i love this compiler see it's literally telling me what to type it here cannot borrow vec3 as mutable as it is not declared as mutable vectors by default they are not mutable this should not surprise you because also variables they are not mutable by default let's add the mute keyword let's see if this makes the compiler happy and yes you see now we have this uh, one two three we can use this push function to modify an existing vector. In this case, we are adding some value. I want to show also the pop uh, function, vec3.pop, and then let's print it. If you are familiar uh, with uh, arrays, you already know probably what's gonna happen. Okay, we get a warning because uh, it's intentional, okay? But we get one, two, three, and then just one, two. So you see the, the value number three has been uh, popped it it has been removed to read elements of vectors let's define for example a vector of characters in this case a bit difference a a b c d e let fourth the fourth element which is of type at char and then at vec four three as we do with arrays we start counting from zero we have a reference to this vector for element let's print it the fourth element is cargo run dash q the fourth element is d there is another way using the get method in this case we'll take the fifth element this is of type option at char and then in this case we want to get the fifth element so the the element in position that has an index four which is the fifth because we start counting from zero we can type a match statement this is uh, correct match fifth and this is why I love the match statement so much. You see, we can we have sum and none because this fifth is of a type option. If you check the line 36, this was way easier because here we were just accessing the element number four. Here we're doing something which seems more complicated because it is, it is more complicated. We are accessing this with the get method. And then we have a match the arm sum will print the value and if it's known it will print there is no fifth element cargo run dash q the fourth element is d the fifth element is e 
what's the advantage of the second approach to compare to the first one? If we type instead of three, the index number 30, which is obviously not here, and we try to execute this program, thread main panicked. In other words, uh, it crashed. Now I want to comment these two lines and try to do the same here. We can type an index 100. And what's the output here? The error is 100. There is no fifth element. The get method returns sum with the element or we don't have the null keyword in Rust but we have this which is very convenient having this sum and the known and we handle this let's understand how we can iterate over the values in a vector. I want to make two different cases. In one of them we want just to read the values and in one of them we want to iterate and also change the values. Let's create another vector. For example we can have a vector or five and in this one we can have uh, again a one two three four five we can have a simple for loop for i in with a reference to the vector and then we can print uh, the values in the vector okay i did a mistake here <laughs> back back five like this of course Okay, and now it works. If we want to change the values of an array, for example, a mutable vector, 6, I want to change the values here, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Okay, just to differentiate it from the other one. Let's say that we want, I don't know, to add one on each of the elements of the vector. We can do still a for loop, but it will be a bit different because it will be for i in. This has to be mutable, of course. I want to add just one. Something a bit strange here is what you see on line 56 is this asterisk before the i. This is called the, the reference operator and we'll have a specific lesson about it. But basically we are dereferencing this reference. It sounds weird because we really want to modify this array. Let's print the vector 6 after this iteration. And we can see 11, 21, 31, 41 and 50. One. What if I want to store different types in a vector? Because at the beginning I told you that a vector is to store variables next to each other, but a vector has a type. How can we store different types? We can store multiple types in a vector using enums. I made a lesson about enums, so if we want to know more about enums, just check it out. I want to use, as an example, a row in an Excel or a Google Sheet. So in this case, I define an enum with, for example, int float text. We can define a row of this cheat sheet in this way. For example, let's say that we have an integer, then a float, another int, and another int, okay? like this, six and nine. You see how powerful this is. We can use enums with vectors. An enum can be a type of the vector. This is super powerful. I, lo I lo really love this. We can print this whole thing, cargo run dash two, and we have an error, but let's, uh, let's don't panic <laughs> and let's read it. A spreadsheet cannot be formatted using this uh, colon question mark. It's also suggesting what we should do, adding this derived debug at the top of the enum. We can try to do this. It, it also printed many warning statements. So I want to, to show you how you can remove these warnings, especially if you are doing a tutorial or a live stream. You can allow this dead code. And if you do this, cargo run dash q, you can read it here on this line, int3, float, text, int, and int. Okay, so this is how you can store multiple types in a vector. You can use an enum as a type of a vector. Very powerful. What will happen when the scope ended here? All the vectors, they go out of scope. Everything that we have inside the vectors, it will just be freed at the end. But this is similar 
and exactly what happened with variables. So at the end of this scope, since they are stored on the heap, they will be free. And this is the end of this lesson about uh, vectors. I will leave uh, below a link to a GitHub repository that contains all these examples. If you have any questions, just write them below and see you in the next video.